My name is Sam Vatnin. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Narcissists in positions of authority are more likely to take advantage of their patients, students, subordinates. Being in a position of authority secures the uninterrupted flow of narcissistic supply. Fed by the awe, fear, submission, subordination, admiration, adoration, and obedience of his underlings, parish, students, or patients, the narcissist thrives in such circumstances. The narcissist aspires to acquire authority by any means available to him. He may achieve this by making use of some outstanding traits or skills, such as his, his intelligence. Or he may achieve it through an asymmetry built into a relationship. The narcissistic medical doctor or mental health professional and his patients. The narcissistic guide, teacher or mentor and his students. The narcissistic leader, guru, pundit or psychic and his followers, fans and admirers. Or the narcissistic business tycoon, boss or employer and his subordinates. These are all instances of such asymmetries in relationships. The rich, powerful, famous, more knowledgeable narcissists occupy a pathological narcissistic space. These types of interactions and relationships based on the unidirectional and unilateral flow of narcissistic supply border on abuse. The narcissist, in pursuit of an ever-increasing supply, of an ever larger dose of adoration and an ever bigger fix of attention, gradually loses his moral constraints, such as he had. With time, it gets harder to obtain narcissistic supply. The sources of such supply are human, and they become wary, tired, rebellious, bored, disgusted, repelled, or plainly amused by the narcissist's incessant, incessant de dependence his antiques, his childish craving for attention, his exaggerated or even paranoid fears which lead to obsessive compulsive behavior, behaviors and so on. So to secure their continued collaboration in the procurement of his much needed supply, the narcissist might resort to emotional extortion, straight blackmail, abuse or misuse of his authority over them. The temptation to do so is universal. No doctor is immune to the charms of certain female patients, nor are university professors asexual. What prevents them from immor immorally, cynically, callously and consistently abusing their position are ethical imperatives embedded in them through the process of socialization, through the faculty of empathy. They learn the difference between right and wrong, and having internalized this difference, they choose right when they face a moral dilemma. They empathize with other human beings, putting themselves in their shoes, and they refrain from doing unto others what they do not wish to be done to them. This is the normal way of the world. But in these two crucial points, the narcissist differs from other humans. The narcissist socialization process, usually the, prob the product of Problematic early relationships with primary objects such as parents or caregivers or role models. Well, the socialization process is often perturbed and results in social dysfunction. Narcissists are incapable of empathizing. Humans are there only to supply them with narcissistic supply. Those unfortunate people who do not comply with this overriding dictum must be made to alter their ways and if even this fails, the narcissist loses interest in them altogether, and they are classif classified as stupid, subhuman, animals, service providers, functions, symbols, and worse. Hence the abrupt shifts from overvaluation, idealization of people, to devaluation. While bearing the gifts of narcissistic supply, the other is idealized by the narcissist. Narcissist shifts, however, to the opposite pole. Devaluation, contempt, disdain, when narcissistic supply dries up, or when he estimates that it is about to. Then, after a phase of devaluation, he discards, becomes indifferent, 
and apathetic. As far as a narcissist is concerned, there is no moral dimension to abusing others, even dependents. They are only pragmatic dimensions. Narcissist asks himself, will I be punished for abusing, exploiting others? If punishment is not forthcoming, the narcissist feels free to do as he wishes. In this sense, the vast majority of narcissists have psychopathic, antisocial traits. The narcissist is atavistically responsive to fear and lacks any in-depth understanding of what it is to be a human being. Trapped in his pathology, the narcissist resembles an alien on drugs, a junkie of narcissistic supply, devoid of the kind of language which renders human emotions intelligible.